I'm going to look at Mark 3, uh, 28 through 30. This is one place where the unforgivable sin uh, is mentioned. So Jesus says, truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an, an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. So in light of all that Jesus had done, all this light he had given, all these miracles he had done, he had shown himself as true. The Holy Spirit was bringing, I think, even a conviction along with what Jesus was doing. But yet, in light of all that, there were these people, the scribes, who were saying what he's doing was of the devil. Basically, there was this refusal to believe in, to, to, to change their minds about who Jesus was and to embrace the truth of who he was. There was a refusal to submit themselves to this light of God that was coming, that was shining on them. They were being given this period, this moment of light, and they were refusing it. Something that I think is important here, though, I don't see in this that Jesus was, nowhere in this does Jesus say that the scribes had committed the unpardonable sin. I think that's one mistake people make when trying to interpret this passage and, and, in, and becoming convinced that they've committed it. Jesus doesn't say that even though these scribes were standing here in, in the face of Jesus with all this light and they were, they were accusing him of being a demon, they're accusing him of doing what he was doing by the power of Satan. Jesus didn't say they had committed the unpardonable sin. He doesn't say that they were, they were now damned to hell with no chance of forgiveness. That's just not here. To put that in would be to add to what is actually said here. Now, I think they're on a course of committing that sin, but um, it, it's not something that Jesus said they had committed. Um, I think the implication is that if that's how they continued their lives, if they continued in that rejection of the Holy Spirit's conviction and revelation of Jesus, if they continued in that and they didn't turn away from that, then yes, that that is the unforgivable sin. That becomes, I think blasphemy is something that has to become the unforgivable sin as it is continued in and decisively um, um, remained in and chosen as a course of life unto death. Um, it's, it's not something that you, I think, can just slip into in a moment. Like, like you, you have this moment of saying something or, or you have this mo moment or even these, this, this period of days of, uh, or, or weeks, even months of, of sin. And then you, you, you change your mind and you're like, I, I shouldn't be doing this. You have this fear. You have this desire to turn back to God. That's, that's not the unpardonable sin. I think it becomes, sin becomes the unpardonable sin. It becomes unpardonable, unforgivable when it is, it becomes the course of life that you are now remaining in. It becomes, this is who you are. You have chosen unbelief. You have chosen in light of all that God has done, all the drawing he's tried to do, all, um, all he's attempted to do in your life, you've chosen this course of unbelief. And in as much as you are in that, that place of unbelief and rejection of the light of God, you are committing the unpardonable sin. But here's the other thing. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit um, is the unforgivable sin. Uh, but again, I think, I think it's important to know that's not a momentary action. It's not just this 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 specific phrase you say or this specific way you might speak to God or these specific things you might say to the Holy Spirit. It's about the state of heart of a willful choice of unbelief in light of the Holy Spirit's attempts to draw you to himself. Um, but blasphemy can be forgiven. Um, so 1 Timothy 1 uh, starting at verse 19, Paul says, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and thereby shipwrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. So Hymenaeus, Alexander, these guys were, they had shipwrecked their faith. That's not good. They had, uh, they were blaspheming. Um, they were blaspheming. And but look, again, this is this is redemptive. Even though that's what these people were doing, it doesn't say that that's, that's the end, that they're now locked into a fate of destruction. 
But what's happening here is still there's these judgments. Again, we see the same thing, hand them over to Satan. There's this judgment that's being put on them for a redemptive purpose. And what's the purpose? Well, it's to teach them to not blaspheme. So I, what I take this as, and some people might disagree, that's fine. This is how I understand it in light of what's being said here, putting it together with the unpardonable sin passages, putting it together with just what the gospel is, how salvation works, that it's by faith. It's not by us not sinning. What I put all this together and what I see is that the unpardonable, the unpardonable sin, that's a hard word to say, it's not, again, it's not this, this moment of sin. It's not this specific type of sin or this specific thing you might say to curse the Holy Spirit. The unpardonable sin, again, is this state of remaining in a state of blasphemy, a state of, of standing in the light of God's knowledge and truth and saying no to it. In as much as you are in that state, you are committing the unpardonable sin. Yes, of course, if you refuse to believe and trust in Jesus, if you if you're looking in the face of the Holy Spirit, the, the only means, the Holy Spirit is the only means God has given to reach us, to, to give us light and illumination, to bring conviction of sin, to, to show us who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit is, is God's avenue. It's like the, the, the means through which God reaches us and reconciles us to himself. The Holy Spirit is the only way. If we reject, if we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and we say no to that, that those attempts of God to reach us, if we say no to that, well, of course that's the unforgivable sin. There, God has no other offer. God has no other uh, means to reach us other than his Holy Spirit. If we refuse the Holy Spirit, we are refusing God himself. We're refusing his attempts to reconcile us to himself. And so, of course, that is unforgivable. <laughs>